unfiltered, uncensored, and unapologetic. This is the Retail War Zone Podcast. We're going to go ahead and get moving here. Um, the one thing, obviously, that we can never forget is our sponsor, The Serving Times, proud sponsor of the Retail War Zone, 2023 Pulitzer Prize winner, no matter what anybody says. And it's an AI free publication. The link to the Substack is here on the screen. It's also in the description of the video. Also, um, for those of you that might be new and you like what we do to spread the word, there is a printable business card that you guys can just print. It, it'll just be black on, you know, black ink on white paper. You know, you can spread it around and let people, you know, see what we do or whatnot. Drop it at your local grocery stores, drop it in your local retail establishments, Dollar Trees, all these other things. Um, it'd be kind of cool. Uh, I really wish we could track who does this. Um, I know that Big Quit Energy's done it a few times, uh, which is cool, which we appreciate. And I also get a report every time that the QR code scans. So it's um, good stuff. Um, Blame Tank says, Steve, I'm mad that I just thought of an idea for an article about grocery workers ruining people's Thanksgiving. Uh, you're a little behind the curve now. I guess you'll have to go ahead and write it and put it out next year. Oh, Adria says, warning, I'll be making cranberry sauce comments tonight. Okay, duly noted. <laughs> um, so it, it's great. Uh, Blame Tank says, I got to order my double-sided cards. Yep, there you go. So having said that, you know, one thing I want to throw out there real quick. If you look directly beneath me, you see, please don't be a Karen this year. It's that time. It's that time. The link to the video is in the description of everything we do. I moved it up. It's right there at the front. Please share it. Share it with your coworkers. We're still waiting for that one individual to play it over the store PA system. Um, that, that person will become legend. I don't know what we could do for that, but if somebody does that, we'll, we'll, we'll come up with something. I'll crowdfund something for whoever comes up and does this and gives us proof that it happened. At Walmart would be great. That would be fantastic. So having said that, we're going to go ahead and get into um, our Thanksgiving shopping. Just to let you know, once we get done with this, we're going to go into some Black Friday stuff, and we're just going to talk nonsense about holiday shopping and experiences and whatnot. We're going to end the year on kind of like a, a, a fun trend. You know, the next couple episodes we do, um, it's not, it's going to be kind of a lot harder, but a good time for everybody to get in the chat and, and have some things to say. So Irish and I had discussed, you know, we were going to do this and I got to give props to hero. This was hero's idea that, you know, what is the, the price difference between Thanksgiving here versus Ireland? Now, obviously we know Ireland does not celebrate Thanksgiving, but Irish, can you give us some background as to why you do? Well, it's uh, straightforward enough. Uh, my wife is from Buffalo, New York, and uh, she came all the way over here, but brought some of the traditions with her. And if uh, we didn't celebrate uh, Thanksgiving, um, it just wouldn't be the same. So, uh, And it's something I enjoy. I've had Thanksgiving in the States and here, and we've been doing it for a long time now and uh it's it's kind of nice actually because unlike you guys it's our own little thing like no one else does it here so we, we get to have a little private kind of like celebratory day uh where i just like make up an excuse not to be at work and uh enjoy it and kind of that's exactly why we do it speaking of which so you so obviously you know not being a holiday that you celebrate there but you you I assume well in advance you ask for the day off uh, yeah, I mean, you see, uh, usually that's, it's not been, a, no, well, it's not a problem these days because I, I, I'm the one that gives the days off. So, right. um, but, uh, you know, in, in the past, uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't like no, November's a terrible time to try and get days off. So I'd have to get plenty of notice, but to be honest, like it's something that we usually do in the evening time anyway. So if you do enough prep, you can kind of get away with it, even if you can't get off until the evening. Right now. Listen, guys, you've heard me talk about cooking steak and whatnot, and, and I, I feel like I'm a decent enough cook, but I have never cooked Thanksgiving dinner. My wife, Hero, is like the champion of that. I've never cooked a turkey. Every Thanksgiving dinner she's ever cooked has been fantastic, but we need to give Irish his flowers because who cooks it, Irish? Uh, I do the cooking. Uh, for, 
generally speaking. Now, my wife has done a lot of cooking uh, as, as well, but I, I would be the main kind of cook for Christmas and Thanksgiving and that kind of thing. I don't know why. I just sort of fell into that. Um, it wasn't a discussion we had. It was just maybe I'm just... I don't know more, <laughs> right? More right. assertive in the kitchen or something, and she just doesn't want to be around me when I'm cooking. Which is true, by the way. I'm just, I'm a cranky cook. I don't like people hanging around me. Do you wear an apron? Oh, of course, I've got an apron that says "prick" with a fork. Oh, that's awesome! Awesome. Uh, real quick, Karen, howdy. Good to see you here. Even if you got to drop out, thank you for all the information you sent me today. That's great. So Irish needs props. He's cooking Thanksgiving dinner. Um. And, and the, the amazing thing about that is, you know, he's native to Ireland. It's not a holiday he grew up with, yet he is doing the deal. So in your cooking, um, what did your wife think about it? Did she feel like you nailed it? Yeah, generally speaking, I, I mean, look, I've had a lot of practice. This, we're, we're together quite a while. so. Um, but ge- generally speaking, it's gotten better uh, most years. So I'm kinda, I've am kind i got it down uh, now. And I think, I, I mean, she's probably polite enough <laughs> to, to, to uh, when it comes to um, complimenting my cooking. Now, look, uh, we, we will concede defeat here. I, I, it's nothing like, and she has said, it, it's nothing like Southern Thanksgiving. You know, she's been par- partial to that as well in the past. Um, so you guys will definitely win on that. You guys do barbecue much better than we ever could. And things like uh, turkey, um, we do it well. You guys knock it out of the park, generally speaking. Yeah, but, you know, going with the whole America thing, we've also figured out how to put turkeys in a, a vat of boiling oil and about damn near set. <laughs> an entire state on fire. So I don't know if that's smarter yeah. or, or not, but you know, it, it, I haven't done any research, but I'm pretty sure that deep frying a Turkey has to have a Southern origin because there's some, <laughs> because there's Sounds also like it, yeah. danger to it. And the amount of reports, like you need to like, after a Thanksgiving, like look at the U S news and just, just, you know, or look Google, like, thanksgiving turkey fires or something i'm sure there are plenty because you got like got these guys like oh, i can cook this turkey and we're going to th- it, it, it's crazy every year we hear about you know somebody deep frying a turkey and setting their house on fire <laughs> so th- that's got to be pretty much a southern thing um and th- as far as what you said about southern cooking look southern cooking is something all to itself you know there's southern cooking and you're looking at like louisiana and places like that there's cajun cooking there is very distinct things with it. Mm. And the one thing I will say about Southern cooking is the Southern women growing up when they learn to cook, they can't cook for like two or three people. If you got a family of four and they were, you know, brought up by their Mimas as hero put in the chat, they're cooking for like 60 people. They, there's no other way. They don't know how to do that any other way. They can't portion it down. It's like you're cooking for an army. And the best part about that is there's leftovers. And you can eat, you know, for, you know, Thanksgiving dinner, you know, three or four days in a row. And in southern restaurants, too, which is really crazy, is there's a local restaurant right next door to where I work. Every Friday, all year long, they serve turkey and dressing. I mean, it's a Southern thing. Definitely. Karen says, I don't cook. My family is all over the country. So eating out is what I do for Turkey Day. Yep. And Blame Tank says, yeah, we're getting the new stories already about not blowing up your deep fryer. <laughs> See? See? I, I don't know, man. Those those warnings, man. It's just, <laughs> like, I mean, I, I'm happy enough. Like, just, just, just let... Natural selection runs course. I mean, look, for God's sake, Jesus. Well, you know, I, I get, you know, when it's your time to go, it's your time to go. But, man, I would hate for, you know, my eulogy to be he <laughs> yeah. was a good man, but he died trying to deep fry a turkey. I mean, <laughs> that, it, there's something so um, romantically Southern about that, but also so bad, to be honest with you. Um, Adria says, this is true. They always cook for no less than 20 people. You have to have a deep freezer on your porch and one in the garage. Yes. You have no idea how many people I know that have deep freezers in their garage. Quite a bit, quite a bit. So, um, having said that, you know, Irish sent me basically the receipt for 
the things he purchased, all right? And it, it's there will be some things here that are missing that are from tr- traditional, you know, uh, how you guys cook um, Thanksgiving dinner. Like, obviously, Irish, I didn't see eggs. Do you do deviled eggs? No. Oh, see, that, that's a travesty. Have you ever had deviled eggs? I'll be honest, I don't even know what they are. Do you like eggs? No, generally speaking, I don't like okay, eggs. Okay, never mind. <laughs> you would not like deviled <laughs> eggs. You would not like them. Right. But that, that's, a, that, that's a delicacy as far as I'm concerned. So he sent me the receipt, and, you know, I referenced, uh, you, you did your shopping at Tesco, correct? Correct. All right, and what I did, since I work in the grocery business, I pulled all my prices from where I work. Now, there may be some cheaper but I was doing it like if I was walking into because I would buy everything where I work because I'm there, right? So I based it on prices that we had going on. Now, there's going to be a catch to the end of all this um, that we'll get to when we get through the list. So, Irish, as far as why your prices are a little bit higher overall we'll cover that at the end you know you had sent me the email clarifying that you know when you talk to your wife um Mm -hmm. but we will leave that to the very end and that is going to be quite eye-opening at that point um adria says deviled eggs are amazing yes they are i love them i could eat 12 or 13 of them and be fine um hero says his wife may not want him to know about deviled eggs well, he that's true too, but he doesn't like eggs in general, so he's safe. Mark's safe on this day from deviled eggs. Uh, Karen says, ha, 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 got a bolt. Uh, good to see you, Karen. Keep doing what you're doing. Stay safe. Happy Thanksgiving. All right, so we're going to go down the list. Um, Iris, did you convert to, or did, uh, did I just do the conversion? Uh, you must have. I just sent you the picture of the receipt. Okay, all right, cool. So. We're going to start with the big one, the turkey. So, Irish, you can tell me what you paid for on your receipt. I will tell them what the U.S. equivalent is. All right. Turkey was 25 euros. Okay. So, 25 euros, and that was for roughly a 13-pound turkey, correct? Correct. All right. So, that's the center of attention for the, the meal. Um, so in America in U S dollars, Irish pays $27 and 22 cents for a 13 pound Turkey. Now, mind you, they don't celebrate Thanksgiving in Ireland. Obviously I'm sure that they go on sale for Christmas. Is that correct? Um, hmm. Not really. Uh, oh, really? No, no, no. I mean, there's a lot more of them, but um, no, they, they, they don't. I've never noticed a price drop towards Christmas, no. Okay. Um, so in Ireland, U.S. equivalent, $27.22 for a thir- roughly a 13-pound turkey. Now, given the fact that we celebrate Thanksgiving here where I work, our turkey is on sale. So it's on sale for a dollar and eight cents per pound. So a 13-pound turkey for us is $14.04. And I know all of you are like, holy shit, that's a lot. But just wait, it gets better. So um, you can go ahead and give the disclaimer on this one too. Um, 32-ounce loaf of bread, Irish. All right, that was three euro, but it's a special bread. It's gluten-free bread because my wife is a celiac. And if I was to buy wheat bread, uh, she would be in hospital. So it's slightly more expensive than ordinary. Right. Okay. So in US dollars, that's 327. Um, For us, where I work, a 32 ounce loaf of bread is $2.27. Now, if you factor in the fact that it's gluten-free or whatnot, there's a dollar difference there. But I can tell you where I work, the difference between gluten-free and just regular is more than a dollar. Okay, so so there's that. All right, next on your list was vegetable stock, which on your receipt said stock pot. And I had to email Irish, and I'm like, there were a couple of things. I'm like, what is this? So stock pot was vegetable stock. So your price there? Two euro and 80 cent. Okay, so converting that to U.S. dollars, Three dollars and five cents, and here the most common that's purchased 
um, is 32 ounce Swanson vegetable stock, $2.18. Next on the list is chicken stock. And I'll go ahead and, and say this because it was the exact same price for you on that. Um, the chicken stock in Ireland was $3.05 U.S. dollars. Um, ours, which is a 32 ounce of our store brand, was $1.50. Next is, and I had to email Irish about this, Maris Piper. Explain what that is. Uh, that's a type of uh, potato, um, and it was three eighty nine. Three eighty nine. Now, I, I did some research. Are, are they like purple skinned? Is that right? No, uh, that would be roosters mostly. Uh, the Maris Piper are kind of um, blonde. Blonde. Okay. So, in researching that, after you told me what it was, I tried to look for our equivalent here in the United States, which are golden potatoes or Yukon Golds. So his price for a four and a half pound bag of Maris Piper potatoes is $3 and 15 cents. Now I, I want you guys, as we do this, keep in mind what the produce prices are and we'll, we'll, we'll get to that at the end. <coughs> However, for us, for a five pound bag of golden potatoes, green giant, $5 and 98 cents. So, Yes, it's a half pound more, but the price does not justify that. $5.98 for a five-pound bag of potatoes versus $3.15 for a four-and-a-half bag, a four-and-a-half-pound bag of potatoes. Kind of weird. So next on the list is our favorite, who should be sponsoring this podcast, Kerrygold Butter. Irish? Four twenty nine for a pound. So four twenty nine euros, and that is four dollars and sixty seven cents in U.S. dollars. In order for us here in the good old U.S. of A. to buy the sweet sweet nectar of the gods at a pound of Kerrygold, nine dollars and sixteen cents. Now, as Iris has said, you know we were talking about it before the stream. Um, you got import and all that other stuff. I get it, uh, but. I think it's very unfair, Irish, that you get an entire pound of that buttery goodness for four sixty seven and it costs us almost ten dollars. I just wanna go on record saying that. Um and Hero said real quick, is turkey a common thing to eat in Ireland though? I mean in America you can hunt them because they're native, but maybe they aren't in Ireland. No, they're farmed here, um, and it's more of an occasional meat. Uh, it, it's available all year round, but um, generally speaking, it's a it's a Christmas thing for the most part. Gotcha. All right, awesome. So next on the list, and some of these things <clears throat> I looked up on our website verbatim per description. So we may have something that's cheaper, but I went specifically for what was listed on his receipt, and on that one, it was garlic granules. And your price, Irish? 60 cent. Okay, so that um, was, oh, I, I must have done something wrong because I've got 54 cents in U.S. dollars. Maybe the exchange rate changed. Um, but that's for two ounces. Whereas here, where I work, Harvest Farms Organic Garlic Granules, which is the only thing you pulled up on our website, and it was the cheapest, using the terminology garlic granules and that was for two and a half ounces a dollar 98 so there's that and then you had next on your list was sage irish 55 cent 55 cent all right so that equates to uh 60 cents u.s dollars um that's for five ounces now for us the best i could find on our website was mccormick rubbed sage um half an ounce for three dollars and 39 cents so think about this for a minute sage for irish was 60 cents for half an ounce for us mccormick which is a brand name which people flock to this time of year same amount three dollars and 39 cents insane so next Irish, you had onion salt in your price? One ten. <clears throat> Which equates to one dollar and twenty cents US dollars. And that's for two point eight two ounces. 
Now for us, um, it's three dollars and eighteen cents, but it was five ounces. So still, you know, two ounces more for that kind of price jump. I don't think is really really justified, but it is what it is. Now this next one is mind blowing to me. However, I understand that the availability is probably easier there. And that would be balsamic vinegar Moderna. Irish, your price? 85 cents. Which converts to 93 cents. And what he bought was eight and a half ounces of balsamic vinegar. Okay. The cheapest brand we carry, eight and a half ounces, is Alessi. Two dollars and forty eight cents. So can you real quick, can you give me an idea as to why you think that is, Irish? Um it's probably the uh, availability. Uh, I, I mean, I'm I, I'm guessing we're closer to a lot of places that they would make <laughs> balsamic vinegar than, than you guys would be. Uh, it's probably similar to curry gold in that sense of uh, you might have to import uh, that kind of stuff for, from further away. Um, that's about the only thing I can think of. I will give a shout out to Tesco here, by the way. Like They're by far the cheapest on this. Any other grocery store I went into, uh, balsamic vinegar is considerably more expensive i mean that's incredible to me because i i know how expensive it is i mean would you get into other brands i mean we got brands i mean that's the cheapest we got some for the same amount that's like six seven dollars it is like okay that that's uh, a little different now the next one and i'm going to err um to the side of caution on this one because i'm almost 100 percent sure the quality of what he's getting is probably better than this and this is cranberry sauce. So your price on that, sir? Uh two eighty. All right. Converted to US dollars. That is three dollars and five cents, and that's for seven point seven six ounces. The cheapest that we have is fourteen ounces. So double that almost for a dollar fifty, and that is ocean spray. But I'm willing to bet good money that the quality is way off. Like, you know, Ocean Spray's bottom barrel. I mean, Ocean Spray right now is cheaper than our store brand. And uh, obviously it's on sale for, you know, um, Thanksgiving. Hero brings up a good point. Is it whole cranberry Irish or the jellied? Uh, whole. Oh, okay, whole. So that could be a little bit of a different process because I, I went on jellied. Um and Adrian says we, is that we can't the, get that here actually. Oh you oh you don't get the jellied version. You only get whole cranberry. W- well, we can't find it. We couldn't find it for a long time. So my my wife did order some off a a store here that does American produce, but it hasn't arrived yet. So okay, real quick, Hero, can you look up and see what a price the what the price of a can of whole cranberry is? Um, Adria says, what does a bag of cranberries cost there? Oh. I mean, obviously, it would depend on the size, but they're 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 the, the fresh fruits are are they're expensive enough. Um, hang on, uh, if you continue on there a second, I'll look it up. Today. Yeah, go go ahead, go ahead. This the, right. we're this is for science. This is for research. We're good. Also, Adria says I was almost assaulted over cranberry sauce today. Well, this is the 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 week of the year where I can talk about how two years ago where I work. We were out of cranberry sauce, and a customer asked our manager, where's the cranberry sauce? And they said that we were out. And the customer literally looked him straight in the face and said, but this is America. And (laughs) every year I I send him a text saying, happy, this is America week. And (laughs) because it was the most hilarious thing. Um, Hero says, mostly America only allows that amount of sugar. Okay. Uh, okay. Oh, I, I get that. That, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Nobody else in the world will allow that amount of sugar in a canned cranberry sauce. And Adria says it's $2 and 50 cents all over the city today. Is that for whole correct? Or is that for, um, a bag of cranberries? All right. So hero says whole cranberry sauce at, at where we work is a buck 98 right now. So whole cranberry sauce, looking at the list, um, still cheaper. So we got it for a buck ninety eight. You guys are sitting at three oh five. All right. Um, fresh 
or sorry, uh, see cranberries. Now this this looks like a kind of a a name brand as opposed to a Tesco brand. Uh, it's coming in at six euros and seventy seven a pound. So say seven dollars a pound. Seven dollars a pound. Wow. Uh, Mrs. Blaine takes us time to reopen the jellied versus whole berry cranberry sauce debate. Yes, we can do that as we go. Um, I don't like it either way. I'm not a cranberry sauce fan. Uh, Adria says a half pound bag of whole cranberries ocean spray is what she has. Do you guys carry ocean spray over there, Irish? Yeah, it's mostly in um, like uh, kind of fruit juice form, though. Oh, so you, you don't sell the the ocean spray cranberries? I haven't seen them. So oh, okay. So. That that, well, that makes sense. All right. So, um, yeah, as once again, a year later, cranberry sauce problem. You know, conflicts and and everybody has their opinion. I don't eat either one of them. You know, the restaurant I talked about that has you know turkey and dressing uh, every Friday. Well, hero and I'll go to lunch and I'll be like, no cranberry sauce. And she's like, no, 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 no don't tell them that I'll eat it. And it's like jelly. I, whatever. I'm just not a fan, whatever. So the next one I had to, to uh, um, email Irish about finger chilies. Now, first of all, explain to me what you're doing with the finger chilies. Well, I, I, I almost regret ha- <laughs> uh, adding them in because that, that is my secret sauce uh, in my gravy. Uh, so uh, I make uh, gravy out of the turkey, if you like. So it's not like a powdered version. So that is that gives my, uh, my secret recipe away. It's a little kick in the gravy. So it's basically chilies um, uh, that are kind of medium strength chilies that just kind of sit in the background of the gravy. And you're wondering why it has that kick. So, so I'm assuming the wife likes it. Yes, she does. Gravy is probably the thing I got complimented on the most. So. Oh, really? Wow, that's awesome because I'm a gravy fiend. You'll have to send me that recipe and we'll try that because Hero swears up and down since COVID my, my taste buds have changed and I, I'm more tolerable to spicy stuff. So maybe we'll have yeah. to, you have to send me that. Um, but going on that, so looking at a comparable item here is Serrano peppers. But where I work, and Hero can can – like chime in if she can find something different um but what we had was like a one pound bag of mixed serrano peppers jalapeno peppers and whatnot so there's a little bit of difference in price here um yours was a dollar and eight cents u.s dollars for 0.17 pounds and ours was two dollars and 98 cents for a variety pack that's a pound so that's kind of off the table as far as comparing. Um, but I, I get the idea that, you know, Serrano peppers really are the uh, the equivalent to that. And, you know, we watch, we brought this up before, we watched Sam the Cooking Guy, and he's a big, huge advocate for Serrano peppers. I've never had one. And um, I don't think we actually sell them individually at our store hero if you've got more insight into that that'd be great so the next one and i had to add, i need to ask you about this so rosemary is it like a like a fresh bunch out of produce yes that, that that's the one i don't like the dried stuff it right. annoys me so yeah all right so your price for rosemary for a bunch rosemary uh 99 cent all right which equates to a dollar and eight cents just as the finger chilies and that's for 0.7 ounces but it's a bunch so i think this is comparable um us a bunch of fresh rosemary is a dollar and 98 cents so almost a dollar more and then the next one is lemon lime now this is a five pack correct now i looked at the tesco site it's three lemons and two limes is that correct yeah Okay, so your price one seventy nine, which in U.S. dollars is a buck ninety five, and that's for five. Um, if we, I'm not aware that we sell a five pack three and two, but if you do the math for individuals, for that exact same thing, you're paying a buck ninety five U.S. dollars. We're paying four dollars and forty cents. Yeah, exactly. 
And Blame Tag says, my wife won't let me watch Sam the Cooking Guy. You really should watch it anyway. I'm sorry, Ms. Blame Tag. I'm not trying to put him in the doghouse. But Sam the Cooking Guy is great. Um, and Mrs. Blame Tag also says, Adria, that sounds delicious. I just don't know that it's going to tap into my childhood memories of Thanksgiving dinner the way jelly cranberry can. Oh, God, here we go. Um, Hero says, Hatch Jar Chilies may be closer to $2.99. Uh, well, I mean, that's... Two ninety eight for a pound of mixed peppers. Um, Adrian says, Mrs. Blame Tag, I get you. I grew up with the jellied version too. Still love it. Irish, here we go with the, the, the cranberry sauce debate. <laughs> it can't this, be ha- this happened last year, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, yeah. all right. So next was family pack carrots. So what was your price on that, Irish? Uh, one euro and nine cent. Okay, and if you guys are not following along too much, um, that's a dollar nineteen cents U.S. dollar. So there's really not a whole lot of difference price wise between euro and USD at this point. It, it's a few cents basically. So that's a dollar nineteen for two point two pounds for the exact same amount for carrots here, three dollars and ninety six cents. And Blame Tag says, I don't care at all. Of course you do, because you're the king of trails, trolls. All right. And then next are onions. And uh, I, I looked at the picture on Tesco, and they look like yellow onions to me. I don't know if they are. But what was your price on mm-hmm. onions? One uh, twenty nine. All right. So in U.S. dollars, it was a buck forty, and that was for 2.2 pounds. For the exact same amount of onions in the United States here, where I work, $2.36. So I went through and I converted all the prices to euro. I may have messed up on what was it? The, uh, the garlic granules. Cause I somehow I wound up with 54 cents. Um, but going through and adding both. All right. United States here in South Carolina, where I live grand total $63 and 34 cents. Ireland, for the exact same items, at the exact same weights, with the exception of the peppers, $57.43. So, Ireland is cheaper. But here's the caveat. So, Irish, explain the tax. The tax is 23% in Ireland. The value-added tax is 23%. So when he sent me this receipt to give you guys an idea, every line item, we're not talking about like here in the United States where it adds tax at the end. Every single price listed was 23%. Now explain to me or to everybody, it, it's law that every like tag and price and whatnot is supposed to include that, correct? Yeah, uh, the display price must include the tax in Ireland, yeah. So they're they're paying 23% extra for and that goes to healthcare, right? It yeah, it goes to general purpose, yeah. General purpose. So so what what all does that 23% go to real quick? Uh I suppose the the running of the state so it, it would it, it's a it's a central fund for the government so it will be health um you know policing every 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 aspect really it's a, it's just a general fund so, all right so it goes to multiple things and blank tag asked real quick do you pay taxes to king charles <laughs> not for a very long time no not for a very long time and adrian says blame tag lol knocking out of the party as usual is uh, of course so if you t- hear where i live there is no tax on anything that was on this list. All right. So with no tax right now, Irish Connection pays $57.43 in U.S. dollars. We pay $63.34. However, if you converted this completely to the United States and you took that 23% tax off, $44.22 was his thanksgiving list wrap your head around that real quick all right we don't have free health care here here all right so you know we have to pay insurance or medicaid or whatever to have insurance 
you know, that 23% tax goes to, like you said, numerous things, but also goes to, towards health care. However, I have to ask you, those of us that live here in the States, you know, $57.43 versus 63.34 to get health care? Is that worth it? I would say so. Especially having kids. You know, now Irish, there's something I want to dispel real quick on the health healthcare. I've heard numerous people I've talked to recently about the 23% tax. Is it true? There's like a wait list for like, uh, major medical procedures or is it, is that just like a misnomer? A wait list? What do you mean? I had somebody I was talking about, you know, the the difference between, like the last episode, the difference between groceries here and there and that you guys paid 23% and a lot of that went to healthcare and, and whatnot. And their argument was, oh, well, I've read there's tons of wait lists. Like, you need a surgery. You've got to schedule, oh. like, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, 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 the health the healthcare system here is is under a a lot of strain it's there's wait lists for 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 everything basically so it's not ideal the quality of the healthcare when you do get it is 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 pretty good like but like you you, you could be waiting a very long time so there's a two tier system here where essentially you can have private healthcare as well so um you know, if, if the wait list is very long and you can afford it, you can essentially skip the queue and, and go privately. But uh, generally speaking, um, it is, uh, it, 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 you would not want to be on the public healthcare system. It just, it, it it's just, you'll be in the queues forever. Um, and uh, it's bad. So, so let me ask you, so it, is it worth the 20, 23% at that point? Uh, yeah, I think generally speaking, um, it, it 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 is uh, like, like I mean, look, our, our, our it's it's twenty three percent on on most uh, things. It does vary from product to product, like, but it, generally speaking, it's twenty three percent. Now, uh, I must make an embarrassing omission here: uh, uh, vegetables uh, and stuff like that. That they they are actually <laughs> cheaper. I'm just double checking that myself. So, but look, generally speaking. Like you know, our our alcohol, for example, will be considerably more expensive uh, uh, tax wise, and our obviously our fuel, um, uh, cigarettes, uh, anything that's bad for you, right, is ta- is taxed through the nose. And like, and, and that's an interesting thing because we were talking about that before the stream. Is when you look, and that's why I said pay attention to the produce prices. So it seems like, and and really and truly, if if you have an objective take to all this right the stuff that is the best for you health wise is cheaper in price the things that are the worst for you are the most and do you think that there's some sort of like reasoning behind that like it's a deterrent you know to get people to steer away from the vices and the things that are you know because the the comparison especially on the produce you know we were we were looking at before the stream you know how much their produce cost versus ours and these are things that are fresh fruit and vegetables that are good for you whereas they're really you know practically speaking are dirt cheap in ireland and will cost you an arm or leg here and and conversely the last episode talking about beer beer mm-hmm. way much cheaper here than in ireland cigarettes way much cheaper here than in ireland the things that are bad for you cost less in the united states but cost more in ireland do you think that's deliberate oh it, it's deliberate for two reasons um the, the first and foremost, the reason that they give uh, for, for all these vice taxes is for you know healthcare because you know realistically you know uh, too much consumption of, of certain things w- will lead to extra pressure on the healthcare system in years to come. Uh, right. So they do tax, uh, I suppose, things that would be unhealthy for that reason. The other reason that they do it is because many of these things are, for to very different degrees, bloody addictive. Um, 
so if you do tax them higher, it's not going to drop the demand <laughs> too much, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's it's there there are, there are, there's two reasons behind it, if you like. Um, now, look, there, there 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 is that debate of like you know uh, you know personal choice versus big government and all. That. I don't think we should go down that road, but but it, there, there, it is basically um, uh, a, a choice. Do you put up with high taxes for better social services? I, w- I generally I would. Now we have not great public services at the moment, but that's more of a you know how they manage it and the bureaucracy involved and stuff like that. But in theory, it should work a bit better. Um, and I suppose, like I said to you before, like the biggest one for me in the states would, would be the healthcare. I mean, it's it's not that it's um, it's not even apples to apples. You can't even compare. It's it's insane what you guys pay for per capita for healthcare. Like, you know, just, you know, the, the average individual, what you spend and what everyone in listening here spends on healthcare in the United States uh, on a monthly basis is absolutely bananas. Okay. It's, it's, you know. So, so given that the people that, you know, are in the community and they normally watch this, we're, we're used to paying, you know, X amount per week or every two weeks for healthcare. So I'm assuming that you have private healthcare plus the, the government provided, correct? Um, I don't, uh, I, 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 I don't earn enough to do oh, okay. private healthcare. Place. Well, well, can um, you, can you give us a ballpark on what the average individual pays per week or maybe per month for private yeah. healthcare in addition? Yeah, there, there's a million different uh, types that you can, but the the average one would be uh, in dollars would be about 170 to 200 dollars a month. Uh, oh, um, okay, that's all you need to say. So 200 dollars a month for private insurance. Correct, which would be substantially better than. Public. Oh my God! So 200 dollars a month. Now let, let me ask: Is that individual or is that family? I got to think that's individual. <sighs> Oh, um, there are, generally speaking, they're family plans. Oh, um, holy shit. $200 a month for a family plan? Uh, that's, I mean, I, I wouldn't be overly confident of what I'm saying right now because I haven't actually purchased it and looked into it deeply, but that, that would, that strikes me as about, there's no one in, nobody in Ireland is going to be paying like a thousand a, a month for a family. I don't care. I think exactly. They'd rather and die and, and that's, hope. that's the point because like when you look at, that that's probably the United States is, you know, you wind up getting a job and you have a family and you know, the wages aren't where they need to be. And we know that. And then all of a sudden you get your insurance paperwork and you're like, okay, cool. I'm gonna get insurance. And then you look at it and you're like, holy shit. If I cover everybody, I ain't, I'm, I'm not making a damn thing. And because it is so expensive and and there again comes into my whole argument about how insurance is a racket because you know some of these insurance policies you run with and you pay for and you never max out you never use for like years and years and years especially if you're younger and they're just milking you dry and you get nothing out of it but i have to think that having the opportunity to have you know healthcare system provided through taxes all right if to everybody is great but if you're able to top up and get you know a plan that you pay for on top of that to make you be able to pass the cues so to speak that is so much more inexpensive than what we pay for family coverage here is a win-win yeah i mean like there's um it comes down to kind of a quality of life thing as well, uh, like you know what what you kind of, your preferences would be. But it, I think in terms of healthcare, it's a hard win for probably everyone in the Western world except you. Uh, it's just your healthcare, the way it's set up, and it, the, the the prices that you're kind of, that get extorted out of you is just insane. Because I think the fear of having no insurance over there is just. Uh, it's it's crazy. I mean, I, I know like some of my my wife's family have needed healthcare, uh, obviously, um, and you know I've seen their bills and they they're covered by insurance. But like if they weren't, like even things for like an ambulance trip was a couple of thousand dollars. 
That's which, insane. Yeah, which That's... to your point, Adria just said it best. And, and this is 100% true. And that this is why our healthcare system is so fucked up. <laughs> Adria said insurance is 100% a racket. Yes, it is. It's almost better to have no insurance because in some states, the state will pay for the treatment if you're uninsured, but they don't want us to know that. And that's true. And it, it's almost like in some states you have free health care. Um, but the downside to that is, yes, you can get your health care on some things. If it's terminal or whatnot, no, you're probably not. But basic stuff, yeah, you you, you can get that. And they don't want you to know that, but they'll do it because you get grants and all sorts of other things. But at the end of the day, what they do is they start digging in your credit. And credit's another thing in itself. So um, it's crazy. And Adria also said, I live in an area where there is an abundance of organic produce and lots of small growers. And the farmer's markets are booming. So it's easy to find low-cost organic produce, wine, or poultry, which, which is great. And then Hero said, we were talking about how the things that are bad for you, um, people are willing to pay more for their vices. That's true. So they can charge all those those prices for the addiction. People going to pay it no matter what. And yeah. Blame Tank says, I live in Florida, Adria. You get sick and they just throw you into the Gulf. Master troll, <laughs> master troll. All right. So we're sitting in 53 minutes. I want to go over a couple of other things real quick. So it's that time of year. Here we are, holiday season, quote unquote, Mariah season. You know, her bitch ass did that video. Her she embraced the meme of her thawing and and two guys with like hair dryers and um, pumpkin masks dethawed her and she screamed, "It's time" or whatnot. So here we are. So real quick before we get out of here. I want to talk about Black Friday and holidays. And so to get into Black Friday, just to let everybody know where we're at, um, this was a Google search about Black Friday sales results. So everybody enjoy. CNBC, bad news for Black Friday. Retailers cast doubt in holiday shopping with cautious guidance. Many retailers struck a cautious tone when they provided their holiday forecast during third quarter earnings reports, spelling trouble for blank, 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 blank. Six hours ago, I pulled this two hours ago. So, yeah, eight hours ago. Um, Best Buy lower sales outlook is Black Friday looms. Amid cooling consumer demand for appliances, Best Buy saw a third quarter drop in revenue that led to the retailer to lower its annual sales. Oh, poor pitiful. For Reuters, U.S. retailers brace for a tough holiday season despite discounts. U.S. retailers across apparel, electronics, and home improvement are bracing for a challenging holiday season, a sign that higher discounts, quote-unquote, aren't working. Then from Bloomberg, Best Buy sales declined ahead of Black Friday shopping. Go figure, right? Right? Mm -hmm. So this is where the chickens come to roost. Um, real quick, blame tag says, Steve, did you catch any NRF articles? Because they swear it's going to be the biggest year ever. Actually, no, because when I Googled that second page, there's an NRF article talking about how they're going to be soft. <coughs> and here's the thing. It, for those of us who've been in management and we've watched year over year numbers and whatnot, man, th this has been projected for a while. You come out of the pandemic, the numbers are great because people went out to shop finally a little bit. Then the numbers are greater because more people were not afraid to go out. And then the numbers are even more greater because people aren't afford, you know, aren't scared to go out. And then greedflation hits and everything goes up in price so fucking much. Everybody's like, whoa, wait a minute. The past three years, we can't do what we just did. And here we are. You know, for retailers out there, and a lot of them did this, and it really pisses me off because the whole concept of retail, when you look at your P&L statement from year to year, the the ideal gain is 10 up. And what 10 up means is you want to be up 10% over last year. 
no one took into account really the pandemic and that flat line where nobody bought shit. So, of course, it's going to increase year over year. And you're going up against numbers of a society that didn't go shop for almost a year. And then the next year, they were scared to go shop. And they got out a little bit more. And then the next year, they were a little bit less scared. And the numbers went up. We, we, we've hit that apex in what they're going to hit. Retail is going to be a bloodbath fourth quarter. I'm calling it right now. The projections are not going to be good. When Walmart going into Q4 tells their investors, hold up, it might not be so good, there's your sign, so to speak. This Q4 in retail is going to be a bloodbath. The NRF is going to try to paint it. However, they're going to blame it on theft. They're going to blame it on all sorts of things. The reality is these companies didn't adjust for falsely inflated numbers from a society that was suppressed for the better part of two years. And that's where we're at. So, Irish, what kind of things are you seeing over there as far as retailers advertising and trying to bump stuff up is there any kind of like economic news over there talking about how sales are going to be soft this year it's no um like not as of yet i mean they're 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 really trying to push things like black friday which never really caught on here you know it's 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 you know it's just not uh it's not part of the kind of uh, retail landscape um as much as it was for you but you know, generally speaking, um, they're they're talking about just things kind of leveling off. Like they're not talking about like you know a huge recession or a huge profits or anything like that. Um, uh, it you know uh, disposable income is down here um, because like you know everyone's been squeezed with the inflation for the last number of years. Right. Um, so I don't think any retailers are expecting a huge amount of um, you know bumper sales. You're right. And and that's a huge thing. You know, you're talking about, you know, what people are expecting. Now, looking at the chat, you got Adria saying, always blaming retail theft and workers' wages. Correct. That is true. Um, Blame Tag says, just Googled. Looks like some sites are already blaming organized retail theft for bad holiday sales. Um, Blame Tag also said, we got an email this week about making sure all the sales staff are cash registers trained. That means they're cutting back on cashiers fourth quarter and using the sales staff to cover. Correct. Um, and the Adri says they're going to resuscitate that old chestnut customer theft at self checkout. Yes, they are. Now here's the thing real quick. Um, you know, for, they are using self checkout as a scapegoat these days. However, however. Um, Walmart really is doing more to dispel that than most people think. If you go to TikTok, there are Walmart people in there talking about the systems they have in place and how you're not, you're not getting out. You're, you're going to, you know, you're going to get caught at Walmart. I'm just telling you. And, uh, you know, they're going to use every excuse in the book as to why sales are soft. But if you're a numbers person and you understand how the business works, I can promise you that long-term long term store managers that are out there right now are pissed off at the world because they understand the logistics of business. They understand what happened during COVID, and they know that that second year after COVID, when the numbers were off the charts, they would never hit those ever again because that was two years of pent up people not going shopping but these people's bonuses these people's salaries these people's job security are going to reside on that i mean it, it's it's insane and they know it the managers in the field know that shit the managers that are running these stores understand they are going up against numbers that are absolutely impossible because at some point things plateau but because everything's 
Wall Street driven and investor driven. You have companies saying, oh, we're going to do so great. And then all of a sudden they're like, oh, shit, we were wrong. We're not going to do so great. And they start telling the investors, yeah, we, we kind of missed forecast a little bit. And guess what happens? Shit rolls downhill. It comes to the stores. They're told to reduce staff. They're told to lay people off. You, like Blaine Tag said, you got people running cashier, you know, running registers that shouldn't be because they should be doing other things because they're cutting staff. This is where we're at. And, you know, the COVID backlash in retail isn't even here yet. This year is going to be the start. Next year, 2024, is going to be when the retail bottom drops out because you had all these bean counters thinking that, oh, the expectation is you are 10 up year over year. We're not going to take into consideration why there was this huge spike. We just expect you to do more and do more with less, which is a problem. And uh, Blame Tech says, Steve, you got to talk some shit about John Oliver stealing your shit before signing off. <laughs> okay. So um, on Blue Sky which I recommend everybody go um, versus Twitter. I've got five invite codes right now that I haven't used. If you want an invite code, message me and let me know. I'll send you one. Um, I was telling Iris the beauty about Blue Sky is basically your feed is filled with people you follow. It's not filled with a bunch of nonsense. If you followed somebody, you're going to get their feeds and, and feeds that feed off of that. So there is that to think about, but it's not like Twitter slash X where you're going to get a bunch of nonsense. Um, you can kind of, it, it, it seems to be a lot more, um, the ability to dictate what you see and what you cannot see is kind of nicer there. So if you want, um, a code and you haven't got one, let me know. Blame takes us. He's got like six or seven. Adria says, go to Blue Sky. I'm there. But anyway, as far as what Blame Tag's talking about, Karen tagged Blame Tag and I. Um, John Oliver did an entire thing on dollar stores. And other than the comedy and the British accent, I thought I was watching a Retail War Zone episode. No shit. And I, I, I watched it when I was tagged in it, and I know it's kind of funny to be like, ha-ha, John Oliver is covering dollar stores. That's great. And I'm like, where the fuck have y'all been? Because we've been doing this for two fucking years now. And I, I made the comment. I'm like, well, shit, I guess we should have used a British accent to cover it. And blame tag is like, well, it wouldn't have hurt. But, yeah, John Oliver, that's great. I don't know who writes your shit. I don't know, you know, where you came up with that. I mean, the fact that John Oliver decided to all of a sudden talk about dollar stores had to come from somewhere. I don't know. But, fuckers, we've been doing this for, what, almost three years now. And I've had, what, blame tag, what, five, six, maybe seven different episodes about dollar stores? You know, I'm glad John Oliver is popular and whatnot. Man, we've been talking about this shit for years. So, Blame Tag done got me fucking fired up, and that's just not right. So, Iris, do you have something nice to say? <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope everyone has a, a pleasant Thanksgiving. I know, uh, given that we're speaking to largely retail workers, it's probably going to be unpleasant for the time that you're in the stores. But, you know, it is... Um, if for, for uh, unfortunately for for you guys for for me it'll be much more pleasant because I don't have to deal with the the, the rat race that is uh, Thanksgiving shopping here. Um, but look, it, it's um, it, look, it's been an interesting episode. I, I do think uh, we've only scratched the surface here. Like, there's we we'll probably have to look at a. a, a in a little more detail in another episode sometime in a few months of like, you know, exactly why it is that, uh, you know, in your country, which is plentiful and vast and has more than enough arable land, how your groceries are more expensive, especially for things like citrus. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, yeah, we grew up on the West Coast and Florida. 
Yeah, you know, it's it's uh, strange, but um, there might be some reasoning behind it that we haven't really. We, I mean, this is a lighthearted episode. We're not we're not delving deep into the details here, but you know, it's um, it's just interesting that um, you know, other than you know, Turkey, uh, it, it seems to be a bit cheaper here. It's yeah, strange. Yeah, uh, and you know, maybe the citrus problem is because we make so much money exporting it, they decide to gouge the people that live here when we make it. Maybe maybe that's it. I, I don't know possible so, you know i i don't know but like you know and and black friday in general that's that that's another thing it's not really a thing here i mean it's all i mean it's in, in all the advertisements like but it's just it hasn't taken off in the same way as it had in the states um that's another thing it's like it's like that what was it the santa claus movie like when they try and invent a christmas too you know it's just it's just another marketing ploy it's right. uh they, they, you know but you know there's some interesting things here We're trying I, I like the lighthearted episodes and now and again we have to delve into the more serious stuff and we're touching on it tonight, but we'll have to maybe revisit this at a different time in more detail. Yeah, exactly. Adria, are you following me on, on uh blue sky? If not, it's at retail war. The It's I think at the retail war zone. Also, like I said, once again, spread the Christmas song link is in the description. Um, Blame tag, you got me all fired up about this Dollar Tree shit. Thanks. I'm mad now. <laughs> so now Hero has to deal with me a few minutes stomping around the the the, the house, pissed off because I got scooped. But you know, we do. That's something I'm gonna throw out there real quick. We do get scooped. It's amazing. Blame tag gets scooped a lot, especially with the Ron DeSantis shit. And, um, it, it's, it's just funny. It, it, it's, it's very, um, atypical of society. You take somebody else's work and you skim off of it and it just isn't what it is, but you know, it, oh, fine, whatever. I'm not really going to stomp out around hero. I'm going to go make steaks and that makes me happy. Um, uh, also too, if you haven't subscribed to me on Substack, please do. I have some cool stuff there. Um, you can go read about my coat, which everybody's sick of hearing about, but it's a great story. Um, it's fun. Um, what? Hold up. Blame Tag says, Steve, I got recognized on Reddit. For what? Oh, that's right. What did you get recognized for? He got Hurry doxxed. <laughs> what? What Irish? He he got doxxed um, by 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 a friend of ours though. It oh, wasn't, it wasn't a bad thing. Yeah. Oh, by a friend of ours. Yes, yes. Uh, I, I'm gonna get, let, get, give me give me a me. reference that <clears throat> I may know that nobody else will. Oh, does uh, it have to do with unions? No, it has to do. Uh, let's see now. Let's see if Blame Tag just chimes in here. If he's all right to talk about it. Um, Kroger is is a hint there. Oh, yeah, yeah. But it, but it, it was positive. He was asked for his autograph. You no, know, it's it's. Positive. Oh, some guy. Uh, was it runs with razor? Was it, um, some guy was like, "Are you Matt Star?" Uh, I know who that. Pro- it it wasn't Erica, was it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well. Uh, yeah, I, I, I just, I'm. There's nothing controversial about it. I just, I'm not sure if, uh, yeah, well, <laughs> if the great. people involved want to talk about it. But, um, but it, it's, uh, yeah, blame tag. In fairness, he, he's, he's cleaned up Reddit a bit. Actually, he's, he's helped me a lot there. Um, oh well, I'm glad that he's a part of that nonsense over there. And, uh, yeah. you know, I hate Reddit for, um, <laughs> the fact that it's so elitist and. Look, if you want to see elitist bullshit at Reddit, I don't care if you follow the subject or not. Go spend a day in r slash UFOs. Go go <laughs> go there. You will know all you need to know about Reddit there. Um, Blaine X says, "LOL, if, I, if was a justice for Evan Guy, but not someone who's been on." Okay. Um, Adrian says, "Did everyone see my article on Kurgulet?" Yes. Um, hero says, go off air. Steve is bad at guessing games. Yep. That too. <laughs> so having said that, everybody have a great night. And also every one of you have a great Thanksgiving. I'll be working. I'm working 12 to eight. It's great. Whatever. 
it's just what we do. Um, but have a good Thanksgiving. Enjoy your time with your family. And we'll see you next week. Iris, you have any close closing comments? Um, no, not really. Have a good Thanksgiving, everyone, and enjoy cranberry sauce or don't. It's your whatever your preference is. Amen. Cranberry sauce sucks. Everybody have a good night. See you next time.